Okay, so I'll be talking about uh, one step refractive solution. Mostly my talk will be centered around the fakey lens, but I'll be touching on some other things which I feel actually are one step refractive solution for the patients. We've done nearly 2,000 uh, uh, IPCLs uh, to name some. And I guess uh, I've been doing this uh, particular lens for last over six years and I have the longest follow-up probably uh, of last six years. Uh, there's no financial disclosure. I'm just a friend and a KOL uh, for K Group. There's no financial relationship. Now let us start by talking, when we talk about refractive solution, what is the first thing which comes to our head? LASIK. But is LASIK as good as a fakey lens is a question. And especially when you move from moderate to higher powers, I feel the plus point of a fakey lens far is far better than your LASIK because you're not altering the corneal biomechanics, you're not touching the tear film. As it is, we all know, dry eye is on the crease. You are not pupillary size dependent, especially in higher powers, where if you have a large pupil, you're restricted. Vision recovery is far more stable and unpredictable. Higher powers, there are no regressions. There are no issues with IL calculation post cataract surgery, because you don't, all you need to do is explant the lens and take the cataract away. You can put these patients for multifocal and eat off even after explantation. Whereas in LASIK, there are a lot of plus and minus points because LASIK by itself may induce some aberrations, change the prolation or the Q value of the cornea where you might have restrictions for using lenses. Retinal size image is definitely better. You can work on a larger optical zone, predictability is yes, and it's a reversible procedure. Unlike LASIK, which is not a reversible procedure, this is a reversible procedure. Once you do a LASIK, fire laser on the cornea, you're done with. You can't do anything. Any trauma to the eye, mild trauma, will not do any problems, whereas in LASIK, you may have flap issues, folds, evulsions, tears, dislodging, and of course, no alteration of contrast sensitivity, which again, you may see in the LASIK. So what is an IPCL? IPCL is a single hydrophilic lens. It is available in different powers, and unlike all other uh, lenses, it comes with a special design which actually is very compensatory for a very high vault and it does not cause more increase in trochlear pressure. I have patients where they are maintaining a vault of 1180 microns for the last two years and they are doing absolutely fine. I have patients maintaining a vault of 280 microns, 290 microns and they are doing fantastic. Let's see our numbers. Approximately 1,452 of V1 model, 464 of V2 model, six years follow-up, 17 cases of piggyback, which I specially use this lens for piggyback procedure for patients who've been operated and have had other surgeries done, other cataract surgeries done, and they have residual refractive errors, they have astigmatism. I love to use this lens because of the predictability and the smart toric nature, which we will discuss. Also done pass biopic. We have corrected powers starting from plus 6 to minus 34. Refractive errors like astigmatism, keratoconus, corneal scars, secondary piggyback, name a thing, I've done all of them. So what are the situations you can actually use this? How does it become a one-step procedure? Till minus 34, moderate to refractive powers. I've done this procedure in patients with corneal scars, induced astigmatism, and they've improved fantastic vision. Exceptionally large corneas, where the other company or competition may not be able to give you the product. I've done till 14.25 millimeter size. Large pupil size of 8.5 millimeter, I've done the procedure. So hugely large pupils, large corneas, large astigmatism, large refractive errors. This is where this particular thing comes to your help, where the competition can't even touch it. Secondary piggyback procedures, we'll go and see the, I'll just touch very briefly. Basic objective is to do a good subjective refraction. I would recommend everybody to do a cyclopelagic refraction because some of these myopic patients may be still accommodating to your surprise. Pupil size measurement is very important, both undilated and dilated. Why you need an undilated pupil in a scotopic situation? Because you don't want the pupil to be bigger than the optic size. And if the pupil does not dilate well, and in case you're going in for a larger size for a beginner, it may be an issue. So uh, one advice, because I keep getting phone calls from all my friends, is when you dilate the pupil, the vault will increase. So don't be surprised. 
Most of the time when the surgeon sees the patient next day and he dilates, and suddenly his heart is in his mouth because the vault has gone to 900 microns from 700. It is explainable, don't worry. And when you put a pupil constricting drop, the vault will go down. So don't be surprised in case you've used pilocarpine a day before and second day postoperatively your pupil is small, you will have a lesser vault. So over 2,000 cases done, I know all these facts, I have these figures which I've written. Your vault can increase by 125 to 180 microns on dilatation. In case you see an opacity behind the lens, this opacity could be just a retained viscoelastic. So initially within first few days, if you see an opacity, don't be afraid. This is just a subset of some, some uh, uh, sizes, overall sizes. Majority of the sizes we used are more than 12.5 millimeter, which is around 97%. This is just a subset of the last uh, 300 patients we have. 7% patients were just on a little shallower side, but again, due to the central hole, a beautifully architectured tapering central hole, you do not get glare, and yet you do not get cataract even on a lower vault. And don't be surprised actually to see this 78% more than six by nine, because most of these patients are high myope, minus 30, minus 28, minus 29. They never had a vision better than six by 24, and now they're touching 618, six by 12, which is far better than even their best corrected vision. So even at a 78% score of six by nine and above is a huge, huge score. This is how the lens looks like. Few points for beginners. These two holes are supposed to be on the top, and this is the, 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 the leading or the trailing loop has to be on the right, and the leading loop has to be on the left. All you need to do is, you do this, and you're ready to go. This is, and I just now show you a video. Now, the rest of the presentation is just videos. We'll just see basic loading and tell you how this lens is different than other lenses. You pick up the lens. This is how the lens looks like. This is the knuckle which should be coming on the left side and the other knuckle should be coming on the right. So I've inverted the lens, loaded it, and now we're ready to go. The best part about this lens is it's a smart lens, meaning you do not need to dial this lens. You just push it in, only two marks are required, zero and 180, no secondary marking. And I am sure we all agree, you cannot go wrong with the zero 180 degree. It's the simplest way to mark the cornea. Once you mark the cornea, all you need to do is put the lens at 0, 180 because the company manufactures the lens with inherent toricity according to your requirement. So no dialing, no gymnastics. The way you load the lens is a simple wing cartilage, butterfly cartilage. So no gymnastics of going in with a sponge, holding a forceps, twisting your wrist, bending your shoulder. Just load it like a normal IOL and push it in. So this is, I'll just now zoom in fast. You make two side ports, viscoelastic, and now, this is how the lens actually beautifully opens. And the best part is, in case you feel it has opened the wrong side or upside down, you can simply go with the forceps and pull it out from the same incision. It's such, such a soft, soft lens that you don't need to enlarge the incision. Just go in, hold it, and pull it out. It'll come out. Then you can, and it doesn't break. It's a very stretchable lens. You can reposition it to the position you want, put it back in, and the same lens can be used. So you enclavate the, uh, the pads. Once the pads are there, and now you will notice, all you need to do is match this with these lines. This with these lines, and you're ready to go. No need to dial, because the lens has got an inherent cylinder. This is, I'm just trying to show the audience, that, and now it's in. You do an irrigation aspiration. The central hole, I use the Bernoulli's principle of physics, I do not have inverted irrigation aspiration on the hole. I place it vertically. It creates a lot of turbulence in that area, and it just sucks the viscoelastic. So you'll notice all the viscoelastic from behind is, this is the viscoelastic strands which are still coming. I, at times, I use these extra holes. I just can do a little bit of irrigation aspiration on top of the hole, and all viscoelastic comes out. So once this is through, let's see the salient points. You need to place the lens at 0, 180. Four years after follow-up, still where I left it. So st rotational stability is excellent. Classical examples, minus 17, two diopter cylinder, both eyes operated, happy patient. Minus 27, minus 3D, look at the smile on the patient's face. Minus 15, with se minus 17, see the patient. This is twin brothers, one brother has got operated, he's happy, and now he's got his younger brother. Again, twins, uh, these are the children of the, the, the tourism minister of uh, Assam. The daughter and son both got operated on the same day, 12 adapters and 10 adapters each. 
Now this is minus 29 diopters with two diopter cylinder, both eyes operated. See the smile. Now this is an ACE, minus 34 with 2.5. Now can you ever imagine what is the kind of difference we people as doctors are making in their lives? We are changing not their lifestyles, we have changed their lives. This man, this young Sikh gentleman used to be a very big introvert. He was a good, very good guitar player. But at minus 34, he would just practice at home. After I operated him, his mother says he started going and playing at the concerts. His outlook has changed. He's become so happy and confident. So this is what a simple surgery can make a difference in somebody's life. Eight diopters, eight millimeter optic size, 8.5 millimeter optic size. Now I'll just go very swiftly on the videos. So this is a refractive solution for large pupils where you can't do LASIK. So this is an 8.5 millimeter pupil. I won't repeat. I'll just show you the size of the lens. Look at the size of the lens. And the only one person to give thanks to this is Mr. Sanjay Argal, who is at the back end taking care of everything I want. He manufactures lenses to the thing you want. I was yesterday discussing with him that I had to say no to two patients who had iris cysts and the lens would not sit. He said, sir, give me the UBM. I will make a lens with one arm shortened so that it can fit in the iris, with, behind the iris cyst and still be stable. So this is the kind of technology which we in India are actually producing. See, this is an 8.5 millimeter optic size. I'll again uh, jump the video. This is a cornea scar with 11 diopters of cylinder. Either this patient would need a cornea change, which Dr. Umang would probably recommend, but this patient was not very keen for a cornea transplant, and we did this surgery. So he's got 6 by 18 vision. I'll just jump the video. Look at the corneal scar. 11 diopters of lens inserted in the eye. Patient unaided, 6 by 18. So cornea scar. Now let's see something else. Another central corneal scar, 5 diopters. Patient is 6 by 9 post-op. Pure cylinder of five diopters. Again, similar situation. You can see a central corneal scar. There. Lens in. All you need to do is align the 0, 180. The astigmatic has to be as regular as possible. That goes without saying. Now, piggyback on a patient who got operated in Chandigarh with a symphony, and she had a plus 4.5 diopters approximate residual power. So she came to me, somebody told her, explant the lens, explant the lens. So in Chandigarh, probably I'd operated a few patients. They said, go to Dr. Kapoor, he will not explant your lens. So I did not explant the lens. We just got another lens manufactured for her shape and size. We put another lens on top of the symphony, and the patient is 6'6 six, six, and 6. We could have needed, we would have needed to explant the lens, large incision, or cut it, cause trauma, maybe capsular bag issues, hemorrhage, iris trauma, nothing. Again, this is a patient operated by me 17 years ago. This was a little boy who got hit with a beer bottle. His father was alcoholic. He broke the bottle on the table. The beer bottle cut his cornea. So I operated him 17 years ago. He came to me with, as a little child I operated him, he came to me with minus 17 diopters of myopia. Now what could I do in such a case? The fibrous capsule, so I have to sacrifice the whole bag. Complete posterior sinecure, no place for an add-on or a sulcoflex lens. Who comes to the rescue? Mr. Sanjay Argal. So I just go in, cut the iris, create a place, minus 17 lens, put it, patient 612 unaided from minus 70. Since it's an 80 micron lens, which will fit beautifully even in a small space, we do that, and the patient is doing great. Again, a keratoconus, post-keratoconus, post-cross-linking, uh, post-intact. These patients do exceptionally well. Once you've got a really uh, regularized astigmatism in control and if everything is stabilized, not a very high astigmatism, these patients... Oh, this video is not playing. One thing to be careful in keratoconus patient is you will get a false ACD. A lot of times in a very high keratoconus, you will get a wrong ACD and you will end up going in for a higher vault this is what can happen. So I've learned from my mistakes. This is what happens. I planned the wrong ACD. You can see there's a ACD is apparently high, but the angle is crowded. 
So I put the lens in, the patient on the second day started showing increased intraocular pressure. So we had to reprogram the whole vault of the lens, and this is where we learned that in two patients of keratoconus, things start. Now this is again and a very amazing thing which is happening. A press biopic IPCL is a boon for your patients whom you've operated earlier. You've operated them, you've done simple monofocal lens for them, and now they come back to you. They say, okay, I want a multifocal. So what do you do? Either you go in for a lens explantation, which cannot be possible in all the times. You can simply go and push in an 80, 85 microns of a press biopic IPCL. This is a primary uh, surgery with primary a patient with, this is a 55 year old uh, patient. Again, I'll, I'm jumping the videos. You put in the lens and this is how the lens looks like. You have a near add of 1.5, 2, 2.5, 3. You, for a beginner, it's a good idea to start plan with the, the uh, less dominant eye first. Then you can actually, uh, this is my OT technician. My OT technician, I operated 14 years ago. So each time when he would come and assist me, he had trouble, his glasses would keep falling over his mask. So one day he said, sir, aap sabka karte ho, mera surgery mein ek uni dalte. So I requested the company, they gave me two lenses free. I put it in OT technician and I'm proud to say he can bend the cystic tome better than me without microscope. I am in a press by a big age. I, I need the microscope to bend the 26 gauge needle. He bends the needle. This is one of his eyes. So you can see I had put Acrios AO in him 14, 12, 14 years ago. And this is another press biopic lens on top of Acrios AO. He had a little about of astigmatism and a little bit of hyperopia which was canceling each other. This is a post-traumatic case. Why, why I want to show this is, this is, the lens is so soft and gentle on the tissue. This is a patient in Australia, he's a tennis player. He got hit with the eye. Actually see, the lens has actually moved onto the iris. And this lens was like this for 22 days till he got time to come from Australia. There was no cataract. So all I needed to do was just push in the lens back again and the patient was ready to go. So the lens is a very soft material. It's very gentle on the eye. So only issues, uh, these are the issues. Explantation for cataract six. One was post-trauma. The patient got boxed in the eye in a fight. Four other explants due to bad sizing. I will never say a product is bad. Our measurements were wrong. Our measurements were higher or lower. And uh, this is a 297 volt. This is 18 month old patient. No cataract, crystal clear anterior capsule. This is 864, 1008. So it's very tolerant to high volt. This is again a one step solution in my opinion. I use a lot of trifocal as a clear lens extraction for my patients. High myopes, hypermetropes, with cylinders. So this is, I operated this case day before yesterday. Two adapters, with, he was a hyperope. 54 year old hyperope. This is how the lens would look. All you need to do, again, this lens is a smart lens. You need to just put it at 0, 180. No need to dial it. Post femto cases, moderate amount of astigmatism. We are doing a lot of uh, 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 relaxing incisions and putting these lenses. This is, I'll just show you a video. This is a patient, high myop, 53 years of age, and the power is, just see the power. This is, of course, you can look at the fundus glow and say it's a myopic patient. I would just want to see this. Look at this. The IOL is minus three with minus four cylinder. Clear lens extraction, minus three diopters with minus four cylinder. Patient doing exceptionally well. These are post-op patients, so even if there's a fibrosis, there are no decentrations. This is again a one-step solution, piggyback, add-on lens. I'll just skip this and thank you. I think this is the most frequently asked question to me. I do not rely on one particular system. I use my Cirrus on an edit mode, which means I do not take what the machine tells me. We switch off the lights because on a black and white mode, it, if it's a very brightly lit room, it's difficult at times to catch the, the black and white photograph. We switch off the lights and we see the edge, number one. Number two, if you want me to say caliper, no. Caliper is my only confirmatory tool. Because I have realized I did a double blind study with my optometrist and myself. If nobody tells me the reading, and I take a reading from caliper, it can be different by 0.2 to 0.4 mm each time. The same person. 
And once you hand the same caliper to another person, it can be different. So we use the caliper only if there is a lot of discrepancy in the digital methods. And another thing which I use is I use uh, autorefractor keratometers, which have pupillum, people measuring systems in it. So we take three consecutive readings of that, edit mode of cirrus, and if required, then a caliper. Uh, the it works 100% of yeah, the time. The second question is, I was more than 40 years older patient with clear lens. How you select uh, between IPCL and trifocal lens? OK. The trifocal lenses, actually, once you're taking out the lens, if there's no lenticular change, I would probably, and there's a high amount of myopia, I would not want to subject the eye to a surgery of removal of the lens because, of course, of the issues uh, associated with the retina. But in case it's not a very high myopia, it's a borderline myopia, I wouldn't want to, uh, I would just go single step and go in for a trifocal. But in case of a high myopia, until at least there's no other option. But if suppose the patient is 54, 55, like that patient, it's no use putting in a uh, IPCL because after a few years you'll be doing a cataract anyway. There, in those situations, I'll go in for a trifocal. Any question from audience? comes to around 30 and you want to put IPCL and you know that uh, he's a being a high myop he can develop cataract also later on so no, all of us will develop cataract yes so no I mean myops have a higher tendency definitely so would you uh, would you counsel the patient that yes of I, course I, yes okay now let me tell you uh, we tell all our patients that we are putting this lens and whenever you get a cataract this lens comes out and a new lens goes in this is a standard counseling advice given to them now, in case you are trying to say that I am trying to give a hidden agenda that my lens might cause a cataract and I might want to explain it, we just mention in the consent form that it is reported rarely this lens may induce cataract. In that situation, it is to be taken out. But otherwise, there is no reason to scare the patient unnecessarily. Yes, all patients of high myopes are warned that whether you get the surgery done or not, you may have a retina detachment. So once we correct your vision, it doesn't mean your eye has become like me or somebody else normal. You still need to be on follow-up for the rest of your life. Two of the patients had retina detachments after two to two and a half years of surgery. It would have happened anyways. Uh, Absolutely. Otherwise. Thank you. I think uh, two extra advice. Most of people are doing, but I'm just suggesting that mark the patient 0180 before the block. And whether it is non-toric or toric, mark all cases to give a most appropriate wall, and even the non-toric cases to try to place in 0 to 180. Because the lens is designed in a such a way, it will give most appropriate Maximum wall. horizontal uh, distance. Yeah. One more tip is, I'll just add to that, in case you have an astigmatism more than two diopters, take the vertical caliper also. It'll help. It'll help to have the size of the lens, the plate size also. Thank you, Dr. Kapoor. Thank you.